often discussed, Singing in the Rain, a 1952 American musical romantic comedy. It's directed and choreographed by Gene Kelly and Stanley Donnan, starring Gene Kelly, Donald O'Connor, and Debbie Reynolds. Uh, and it also featured Gene Hagen, Millard Mitchell, and Sid Charisse. The film won and was nominated for many awards in like every space, the Golden Globes, the, Writer, the Writers Guild of America, uh, the Academy Awards, and it has uh, topped the AFI's greatest movie musicals list. And it's been highly ranked on their list of overall like America's uh, greatest films. And so the list of accolades for this movie is long. Okay, and so the film is clearly regarded as a classic in many spaces. But today, we will determine whether it is a classic from other right perspective. We'll do a recap and then we'll discuss plot and direction and characters, acting, cinematography, sound music, whatever comes up. And then we'll take a vote using a voting symbol that we have picked, especially for this discussion. But we got to start with intros. Kick us off, bro. Hi, I'm Aubrey Wright. I'm the oldest. I'm Janaya Wright. I'm the middle. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I am Brittany Wright. And I am the one of those things. Oh, goodness. Uh, those I things. am the final Wright <laughs> sibling. <laughs> After me, Paul went down and chopped a tree on himself. <laughs> That doesn't even make hello, sense. hello, podcast, podcast world. Hey, <laughs> y'all, uh, there's something that I didn't even tell y'all before we started. Okay, that I don't think the two of you were tracking. I waited till we were on air to 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 drop this on you. Okay. This is our 25th episode. All right. What? <laughs> I love how y'all both defaulted to air horn. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, Janine, that's what we, that's what it would be. Right, that's right. what it would be. <laughs> and maybe I'll add some sound effects, some celebratory sound effects on the audience. Listen, and we need some um some some what are those things called? Fireworks. Fire July. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> your hand movements of just opening and closing your 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 hand. Jazz him. <laughs> we need jazz hands on the screen. Here's here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> You know Janiyah didn't feel like editing today, and you're going to make her edit because her OCDness is not going to allow the opportunity for her to throw some fireworks. You're 100 percent correct. There she's, will be she's fireworks. Not, she's not going to be able to let that go. She's not going to. Y'all, but it's it. worth it. It's worth it because this is a big deal, y'all. I I just want to say like I, this has been so special for me to share this with y'all and for us to have documented for all time like this part of our relationship man I, it yeah. means so much i just love y'all yep. we'll always be able to look back on it cmb we all we got yeah but <laughs> y'all we got <laughs> all right well y'all let's get let's get into it you know we have to right. pick a voting symbol for today and you know what y'all <laughs> i do I really believe <laughs> that we're gonna have mind meld this time. Okay. All right. All right. I have All I right. have two that I've come up with. Let's start with those two. The All first right. one is the most obvious, which is an umbrella and a raincoat. That's obvious because when you okay. think of singing okay. in the rain, okay. you Here's think the of the the imagery look, look, of the look. three main characters with the umbrella and the raincoat. You were so close there. <laughs> you were so close because it's, see, it's the that that was a very close answer. <laughs> but all right, well, first of all, what's the second? What's the second? The second one is an antique microphone, the kind of microphone with like the round. But because, and I think that's important. These, because these movie, are pretty good. These are pretty good, Janaya. Because this movie is about, it is about the film industry moving from silent film yes. to talkies. And so what could be a better symbol of that time than the microphone? Well, I, I, I actually, the, the only, the only 
the microphone was good. I, I thought of that as a second as well. Yes. Uh, but it's just, I think it would just, my vote would just be for an umbrella because that is is closer to a symbol. I think the disconnect. Oh, so you're just gonna let your clothes get all wet. That's fine. So what if the rain's like? Brittany, can you please help me? <laughs> <laughs> No, that's she not. just doesn't Listen. understand the symbol. You she doesn't dry, understand what wet. you know how the, the whole just, symbol process is. It's not is a comprehensive so, solution. It's so simple for me and you. Like it really clicked <laughs> for me and Brittany. No, no, that's fine. What a symbol is. Solutions. That's fine. That's not who I am. I really I blame up, myself. <laughs> I blame myself. <laughs> I just show up differently in the world, but that's she fine. She just really I love has it so been, much. She's <laughs> been riddled with power since. <laughs> that's what it is. I let her win that one time i told you i told you and it's my fault i told you ever since the bench ever since the bench ever since the bench (laughs) she's just been she's lost her mind she's lost her (laughs) mind listen Brittany, can you give us can you give us the can you give us the on the spot symbol uh votes from from the mind of Brittany right yeah, I totally said I was like, oh, an umbrella. It's it's in the rain. Like I don't. <laughs> I was like in I my head. I was like, mm, I said, it's not. We are agreeing with you. It's just that. It's a light. It's just that an umbrella. No, that's fine. It is... Listen. No, sometimes it just is like a sprinkle. Correct that's me fine. if I'm wrong, but Gene Kelly did not have on a raincoat when he was really, jumping around in not the rain, and the policeman came up to him and was like. Okay, you're I right. didn't want to you're say right. it, Britt. You're right. In the iconic Britt, I didn't want to say In the iconic <laughs> the scene, scene when he is singing the, name the song. Of the movie. <laughs> he just and then an he went as far as to give his umbrella away. Because he was just loving the rain. You right. Which you wasn't right. really helpful because at one point he had the uh, the umbrella open upside down. So All right, look, 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 stop, you, we, look, we gotta stop because I can't wait <laughs> to talk about it. Was not his priority. I, I can't okay, wait to talk about it. It was not his priority. So he was in we love. Stop. We gotta stop. We gotta stop because I, okay. I, I I can't wait to talk about that scene. Okay, you have the man risking the all into it. Okay, well you know what, y'all. The recap is short. The recap is short. So let me get through. Let's talk through, and again, y'all, if you're new to The Right Perspective, spoilers abound. Okay. Oh, so, Everywhere. And we do that because we're, we're, we're often covering content that people saw a long time ago. And Listen. so we just do a little refresher. So this movie is what, from 19 <laughs> what? <laughs> so the movie is from 1952, but um, the movie takes place in 1927. And it's essentially about a celebrated acting duo, Don Lockwood and Lena Lamont, trying to adapt when the film industry is shifting from silent films to talkies. And right as this transition is happening, they are at the height of their their fame. I mean, people are clamoring to see them. And to add to their celebrity, the movie studio has been doing publicity to make it seem like they are romantic interests, uh, not only on the screen, but off screen as well. And so this is problematic, though, because Lena thought there really was something between her and Don, and the publicity stunts just fed her delusions. And she really, you come to learn, is dumb as a doornail. Okay, and she also has the nerve to not only be dumb as a dorm now, but to be quite mean and spiteful. Okay, but Don, he just like swats her away constantly. You know, he does it nicely because he is not trying to stop the gravy train. Okay, and Don has come up from nothing. He has worked very hard. He and his original performing partner, his childhood friend, Cosmo Brown, they have worked for decades to get to this place. And it is work. They work their way up from being extremely poor children, like through being desperate vaudeville performers, okay, to finally working on movie lots as musicians uh, that played um, music on set for silent films to set the mood. And after volunteering to be a stuntman for a particular film that was in a desperate moment, Don does such a great job as a stuntman that he becomes a sought after stuntman and is eventually cast in a film uh, with an actual part. And then the rest is history. And Cosmo has risen alongside him as a movie musician. And so they have put in the work and now they're at the top of their game and 
right as they were at the top of their game. <laughs> this is when the industry starts to shift from silent films to talking. Okay. And this happens right as their next silent film, the dueling cavalier is about to open. The biggest problem for them is that neither Don nor Lena can really act. In fact, they're just good at doing a lot of like the, the overly dramatic gesturing that's required for silent films. And on top of that, Lena's speaking and talking voice are just awful. That's the only word, just awful, okay? And they decide um, to, to turn the dueling cavalier from a silent movie to a talkie, but it was just awful. It was just horrible, horrible. And one night, while Don Cosmo and Don's performer girlfriend, her name is Kathy Selden, they're contemplating just the potential ruin that will come to them after that bad talkie comes out. Okay, and they're trying to be optimistic. And they hatch a plan to turn the movie into a musical and rename it to The Dancing Cavalier. And this would give Don a chance to leverage his real strengths as a performer, singing and dancing. Those, those strengths that he had honed over decades um, while uh, being a vaudeville performer. And so the only way that they're gonna make this work though, is to have Lena's voice dubbed out with someone else's. Because again, her voice, singing, talking, awful. Okay, movie will be ruined, okay? Um, and they decide to dub her voice over with Kathy, Kathy's singing and talking voice, Don's girlfriend, because she, her voice is amazing and she's an unknown actress at this point. And she's just, just starting to, to get, make some, some waves and break into the industry. Lena is of course insulted at being dubbed and even more insulted that the voice being dubbed over hers is Don's girlfriend. She wants to be Don's girlfriend. And so the movie does get made with Kathy's voice included, dubbed over Lena, but Lena tries to take control of the situation by working with her lawyer to ensure mm. that Kathy is legally trapped into being her voice for the duration of Kathy's contract. And Kathy, Kathy's contract is brand new. So we don't get the specific period, but we know it's going to be a period of time that is enough to, to essentially ruin her career and her chances of being a star on her own. So fortunately, uh, Lena has a good lawyer, but she remains, again, stuck on stupid, dumb as a doornail. So when she forces Kathy to sing behind a curtain for her live so that she can lip sync after the successful premiere of The Dancing Cavalier, Don and Cosmo just pull the curtain back to reveal to the audience <laughs> that Kathy's voice is the one that they loved in the movie. And after that, Lena is humiliated and ruined. And Don and Kathy are now lovers, both on screen and off screen. And Cosmo has a major career as the head of music at a production house, right as the industry is shifting into needing that career path more than ever. So <laughs> of course, in the end, all is right in the world. <laughs> the end. <laughs> that was perfect, a fun recap to write, y'all. Perfect I have to say, recap. That one was always. fun. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. That was a fun one, I gotta say. Because, again, it was like recapping a fun storyline, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, what? That so, movie was fun. It was. It was, it was fun. It was, <laughs> I, was, I was like, am I laughing right now? I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm cracking yeah, up. I, you know, I'm and honestly, up. it's that is the best <laughs> word to describe it, I think. It, it's, it, it's crazy because <laughs> the, the whole idea behind us doing this podcast was the fact that you know we spent a lot of time watching movies that I, that I don't think people would have expected we spent as much time watching <laughs> and uh you know it's just just how there was no chance for me to not enjoy this movie and I and I realized that that this was just imprinted on me young <laughs> and I was just going to enjoy this movie, you know, because as soon as I saw the the, the movie, movie chose you. You didn't choose the movie. <laughs> Brittany, it's I, deep. I think I think it's so, deep, bro. Because as bro. soon as oh as soon as I saw them in the beginning with the you know the the umbrellas and the uh, the uh, raincoats and stuff, 
that Janelle was talking about. <laughs> as soon as I saw, I just felt good immediately. Oh, yeah. Like, like as soon as soon as, as soon as I saw that in the beginning, I was like, it, it just took me back. You know what I mean? It just, it just, it just took me back to us sitting in the living room, um, eating pizza. It, it just, Aww. you know. And, uh, you know what? It's funny because I remember the essence of singing in the rain mm. but as i was watching it i was like i'm sorry is this my first time seeing this musical really? which i know the answer to it is no i <laughs> know i've seen it at least not. a thousand times That's how right. old am i 35 i know i've seen it at least 35 times like i <laughs> and i was like why does it feel like i don't remember any of these things but there mm. the other musicals like that we've watched i remember them but i, I think I, I, I think i remember I, singing in the rain i, th- wow. I think I, I think because i think because singing in the rain didn't have as many of those like uh paul went down to chop the tree of the self moments like yes. like like all, <laughs> like the other it's musicals that yeah. have these taglines and stuff that we you know just keep going back oh it's to, such a good point you bro. know but Singing in the Rain was more of a feeling, but even in watching it now, there wasn't um, lines that I would call back to. It, it's just the, the movie in general. You well, know, but there, it, there it, were a couple of catchy lines. I got to say. Yeah, like, th- absolutely. But I'm just but, saying. But they never made it into like the right family joke. That's what like, I'm saying. Whereas yeah, yeah. so many of the other ones have these little things Nuggets that, that are just a part of our all the time. Yes. Yeah. You know, but yeah, it, it, but the feeling, like I think, like you said, Brett, it, it, the feeling, no matter what, the feeling is there. Like you remember, yeah, the feeling of it. Yeah, yeah. and bro, when you just name like just our family, um, you know, sitting together with like Salvatore's pizza and wings, wings. and you cherry know, pop. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Ow. Listen, you know, yes. those moments, those moments will, I mean, those are, they are truly priceless, you know, yeah. but I do have to name that even the nostalgia and the preciousness of those times hasn't saved every movie. Cause I think about West Side Story. Um, when I think about watching West Side Story in our childhood and I reflect on it, I get the same warm fuzzy that I get when I reflect on singing in the rain and watching Mm -hmm. it as a child. But now with adult eyes and the eyes of a person who's watching to critique, I, West Side Story lost a lot of its luster to me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I I I think- Like, I I will say that the movie, watching it now, the the nostalgia can't always save a movie. Oh, yeah, and and the thing thing is, is that West Side Story, has a lot of issues that that we talked about even when we when we when we reviewed that yes and, and that that you can't not see as an adult man um, but it, especially just you know as a conscious adult or whatever you that want was to say episode, episode but, but, 15 y'all check it yeah, out episode y'all 15. taking that one in but um but the thing about singing in the rain is that it was just a feel good movie and even in the like even in the absence of any people of color at all it was like <laughs> hold there, up it was, there was that man at the door <laughs> he was like filipino or something was going on there okay, he had well, that one line and i was like shout out but, but, <laughs> to the but, people but, of color in a movie <laughs> the person but, 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 but the person okay. the person <laughs> <laughs> the, whole, the whole department is the one part. But what I'm saying is, is that it, it was so absent that it, you didn't have to, it's just a movie that you could just watch. And, and like, like it's just, it's just a movie you get, it's like, it's like candy or something. You know, it's, it's not, it doesn't well, have nutritional I, value. I, I, I will just... say, like, I, I didn't think we were going to start here in the discussion, but there was one moment that made my skin burn off from oh, it just in terms Listen. of like, just a Racism. moment of like, it was so frustrating 
they and it was so brief it was so brief they were just so quick it was one of those moments where they were showing they were just giving you evidence that they were on a movie lot with a lot of movies Mm -hmm. being produced at one time and they walk through a particular filming where it is a bunch of white men dressed up in like a caricature of indigenous or, or just i would just say of any kind of like people of color in some kind of like ritual or ceremony and they're like with mm. drums and like oh man they have like black face black face and horns on their heads and like they're just clearly mocking like an amalgam of cultures you know what i mean and it's wow. just you and know, it you know just it's like, funny like, like i must do- yeah, I must have, I must have blinked away or something like. And then the guy on the side of the scene is like, "Really, give it to us, guys, or something like, get into it." And it was just like, "Really?" It's like, get into what? Really? But the around. very next, like, the very next movie was just people like at a ball game, and I was just kind of like, "Y'all could have chose any other movie to display that they were on a lot." But you yeah, no, that, that, that particular yeah, yeah. scene, I was like, and you know, they the, could have the, the, my... just had people even just hustling and bustling. They didn't need to just show any specific anything. movie, but they chose anything. that. And so part of me was like, okay, this movie was made in the fifties and they were, they were, they were documenting the era of the late twenties. And so maybe there was something intentional and virtuous yeah. about it. Kind of saying, this is the kind of thing that was happening at the time. Cause you have to realize they're also they're making a serious comment on what was uh, what the bar was for movies at the time. Very true. Because right? they're Very talking true. about like all they had to do to be extremely wealthy was do a lot of gesturing. That was all they yeah. had to do. And they mock that. And so part of me, and again, maybe this was just me wanting to forgive the movie. I was like, they did that on purpose because they was just trying to show like and they were what? ignorant. And the other, 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 <laughs> other thing is, and again, I don't, I don't know because I intentionally don't do research on Gene Kelly. I don't want to find and like I, I know that's any just, of that. that that's just my that cognitive that. dissonance, I guess, because I just like I don't want to find out something that's going to color my opinion of Gene Kelly. I just don't. And, yes. and, and, and like, and, and the thing is, is that I'm intentionally doing that, and, and I'll admit that because I'm and just. And we saying, do that for the podcast because we really wanted to be the right perspective. So I think we yeah. we we did make a decision early on to not do a bunch of research before yeah. we yes. record. We tried and, not to anyway. And because and, and the, uh, the other piece of this is, even if they weren't trying to be virtuous. I haven't seen a lot of those silent movies. Maybe that was what it was. You know, like may- maybe that's maybe yeah. that was what they were trying exactly. to show. Exactly. You know, but so, that so, was and, the time they were but, documenting but, the time. But the but the point out, you know, that honestly, I don't know if it was a just a mental, come out. I don't know, but I I I don't know if it, if it was just my brain. You know how sometimes your brain will just gloss over something i, I don't yeah. know if that's what happened but what i what, what, what i'll say is okay is that, what, when did it come out 1915 okay because yeah. i think birth of a nation wasn't it like the first there was something about it that it was the first something type of film a uh, something about birth of a nation and so it makes me to to the to the point of forgiving them or picking fun at the time or just calling it out for what it was you know, Birth of a it Nation was, was around was, the 1927. Was, I know at a minimum it was the longest, like it had, it was like the longest film that had ever come out at the time. I don't okay. remember what else it was. And I was, I was about to, to Google and try to figure it out. Man, we're, it here's matter. the thing, we're, we're, the we're getting is, dark. And the, and the whole point is, like we're, <laughs> we're, 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 we spun off getting dark like, and like, the, the point I was like, you know, you it know was, why? Was was to to make. Because life is jazz. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the point I was trying to make is this was just a feel good movie. There's so many and now we're all on uh, uh, this dark territory. I, I'm just saying, so dark. like, like, it's like it's I raining just, in a this movie way. to <laughs> me was just colors and great dancing. And <laughs> like Fantasia. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it was, was just was fun. And, and, I, and I'm just saying, for me, it, I just... I smiled the entire time I was watching it. 
And uh, well, before man, we move from that point, because I don't want you to get off that point, bro. I do want to agree with you and say, I personally had to dispense everything and just enjoy the movie and say to myself, I'm watching talented people. Yeah. They, I, I can't dismiss that from them. I, they are great. Like, I, like that's what no, I was I, like, all right. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, man, cause like, and, and watching, watching, um, you know, j- just like right from the beginning and how many uh, little moments have permeated pop culture, mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, make them laugh. Um, and uh, what was the name of the song? It's escaping me right now. We're, we're all three of them, right? When they were making the decision to change it into, uh, right before they made the decision to change it into a music. Oh, and they were dancing uh, in the house. Morning. Yeah, 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 good morning. Yeah, that like yeah, that yeah. that has permeated. Yeah. And the other thing is, is that we see like so good. Michael. We we see like if we watch Chris Brown dance, in my opinion, like I could see Michael Jackson influences. But then when I watch uh, Michael Jackson dance, I can see Gene Kelly. Absolutely. Influences. Absolutely, it, it's just bro. it's just thing, how to see. Oh. It, Let's how, talk about the dance. Let's talk, let's lean in there. That that was, is a, a that's a, a controversial statement you just made right there. I you think can't so, see so? how I, I I can't I can't I really can't see how. I, I mean, like I I think I actually I love think, a controversy, but I don't know about that. Too. Yeah, I, I actually think that Michael Jackson <laughs> might have said that himself. Actually, you I know don't what I'm know. saying. I haven't done this research, but <laughs> I. I, I, <laughs> I but you know, I have no idea. The general point is like attribution of of genre of of thing of dance like tap, that is tricky, okay? Because it's like attributing like a well known black tap dancer or a not well known black tap yeah. dancer and then a very well known tap dancer, white tap dancer yeah. like Gene Kelly, like that's gonna be hard. So yeah. I could see Brittany that you're right that some of that attribution is probably fraught, but. Um, bro, what I heard you talking about was just like that classic era of like what tap dance was um, at that time. You well, know? well, I, 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 I and, wasn't and really seeing that 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 dance style definitely yeah, I, yeah, the, the, influenced so the, Michael Jackson. Yeah, and I was more, not 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 I wasn't in definitely I wasn't even the tap is fantastic as well, but I was talking more about his. Movements and like the soft shoe, the overall, yeah, 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 kind the, of, the yeah. overall mm-hmm. um, movements and, and and how and I and the the other thing I wanted to say is I don't know where his influences came from, but I'm just saying as far as like you could just see how this level of dance permeates throughout, and I'm not even saying he was the mm-hmm. originator. I'm just saying as far as what I've seen so far. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's yeah. just interesting to watch how, you know, through day, de- I was thinking like, this movie came out 70 years ago. And there are, I can still see influences of this now. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and that that's what was just interesting to me because like the um the guy who played uh what was his name? Who played Cosmo uh, Brown, the best friend. Yeah. Who, yeah. When he did, when he did that, make him. I, I, I want to look it up because because he wasn't one of the bigger stars that I knew of. But man, that dude. When he when, Bro, you, when he you did, mean, that, you mean Donald O'Connor, who played Cosmo, the best friend? Yes, Donald O'Connor. Yes. Yeah. You. That's. I'm sorry. Yes, Donald O'Connor. He, he, so I good. noticed. I was mixing up with Don the character. My ball. But 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 what I'm saying is is that. When he did that, make him make uh, make him laugh. It he was clearly like clearly can dance as well as Gene Kelly. Like they're clearly on the clearly screen. like 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 he and <laughs> and and it was like it was like there were camera tricks, but it wasn't. It no. wasn't camera tricks. It was not. It was just him moving and, and in a ways that was just amazing. Was like. Amazing. 
And it's just so effortless. And I, I don't know. Look, I'm sure they spent all day or weeks or whatever getting that take. But it looked like he did it in one take. And look, because he was so good. The it looked like he almost said, y'all. okay, oh. so what you what, what you need me to do? You need me to dance around here? Uh, okay, I got it. Just just put the music on. I got you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some, That's, man, that yeah. character, what I appreciated about that character was that, and what I appreciated about the, the musical was that he never was intimidated by his friend being the more famous of the two of them. So there was not like this backstory of right. revenge. It was like, why are you, you on the, two, why are you a household name? Yes. And I'm not. And it's it it, it, two it friends, friends that were every time. Every time. But there was there was never any malice. Like no. these were just two friends that were clearly still had that boyish nature to them. I love of, of having friendship. fun. They were so no, much fun. So they good. were so it much so fun. Good and that so story good. at the beginning on the red carpet when Gene Kelly's character was telling like this whole narrative about how all these things have happened, but you get to see the real pictures of them where it's like, y'all was not doing that. And so it's just, <laughs> I just, I just appreciated that part oh, so much. I was like, yeah. this movie and, and is like, silly. It was, it, was, it, was, it was also interesting dance. because at that time you could get away with embellishing your story like that. And like, I was just thinking about like, they could never do that right now because no somebody way. would have had a cell phone video. Somebody like, would be like, I like, like, knew oh, him. <laughs> Yeah, here you go. You was dancing in a pool. You, you know what I mean? Like cancel him. Cancel him. Yeah, cancel him. Cancel, lies, cancel lies. Gene Kelly. Yeah, y'all. Hashtag before we leave the Kelly. dance, I have to call out y'all. Sid Charisse, who was the woman that danced with Gene Kelly's character in the Dancing Cavalier. Do you remember the scene with like um, she was in white and yes. the fantasy? Listen, and then, yes. and then she was in like, wasn't it like green? Oh, y'all, Sister Listen. Reese, let me tell you. If you don't know, you better ask somebody Honey. because that's Sister Charisse. I said, well, you know what? This is how you only dance in a portion of a movie and then get named when the movie, when they're saying who starred in it. Be, she, she was a, she was a, a named, um, you know, named yeah. as a part of the advertising of the movie. But that's how you do it by being an amazing dancer. That whole she that whole, opened her mouth to say a single thing and made such an impact on that film. Okay. I mean, the, 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 the thing is, like, we are opposite Gene oh. Kelly, right? And like, what a dancer. Lose. You can't half step. You can't and, half and, step. And it was like, she knew. They that, transported oh no, us. I, I, like, they transported. Like, she was, we, like, she was like, I'm, 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 I'm hanging. And it, like, this is not. He better hang. This is the. He, he better, better hang. He better. And, and like, I love. I better just, hang, Jean. I just love that. I just love oh, that because so good. Even, even when you know, she uh, because like when she had her, when she, in the very beginning, when she put her leg up with the, with the hat on her on her leg, and which, first of all, was. And an amazing leg, let me just say. And then just where it was just like, oh, we about to do this thing. And when you saw them, just how they could get up and get down and just so effortlessly. And, and, and before we, we can't. Wait, I have to the, say something on Sid Charisse. And again, yeah. I was just trying to look up her name. Okay. Mm-hmm. When I discovered that she had polio as a child, y'all. Okay. So, wow. Brittany, feel free right now to take one make make an inspirational statement, sis. Do it about <laughs> Brittany likes to extrapolate. Make listen. Sis, this, 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 what would they have this said? Whole, she recovered from polio. Start? Polio. Oh, you're not gonna walk. Polio. But what does she do? She lifts her leg up in a musical. Do not <laughs> let people define you off of your current Why did circumstance. You start her? Why did you start her? She needed to. She needed to be do not let people do that. They don't know what you're about to do. No. Nope. Giving up on yourself is the worst thing you could do. That's right. Thank you, you manifest sis. that. Thank you, sis. Thank you, sis. Okay, go on with your thought, bro. Uh, we just what, had what's to pause up, what's up, what's up? needed to get that shine right point, now. 
at some point we're gonna have to we're gonna have to buy Brittany a, a hat or something that she can put on when she about to start doing the sermon on the mount. Like, 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 yeah. she, like she get like oh, it's time for the hat. And yeah. then, you know, but uh but what I what I'm saying is I it felt like we were about to migrate off the dancing, and mm -hmm. I just have to say, which is hard to we, do, y'all, because the well, dancing, everything, the, oh. uh, every scene was great. And the other thing is, is that I love how obviously Gene Kelly directed this, but he did not uh, like he let everybody shine, and yeah, I don't want to say, right. but it's just there were scenes that he did not. He stepped back, and where he could have did everything really but when it was his time like that singing in the rain uh oh. dance sequence gets me every time i watch it every time i see it mm. every time i see it it so gets good. me because it is just flawless it's perfect it just it communicates not only his skill but just the emotion of what he was feeling, just that, just that space of being in such a dark space. Like, I don't, like my whole life, because the, at the point that this dance sequence happened was right after they saw the original version of the talkie, where it was just horrible. He didn't know horrible. what he was going to do. He's in his big house. He's like, man, this is about to be over. So we might as well enjoy it tonight. He's uh, he's embarking on this new relationship, but it's like, man, my wonderful new relationship is happening at the end of my career. Like this is marring what was supposed to be the you know start uh, of just an amazing chapter in my life. And then through the conversation with the two closest people to him in his life, the idea was just like bang, and we've all been there where you have an idea where it's like, oh, it's about to be okay. And yeah. he just- The relief. I, it, it's like, yo, this is rain. This is what people are supposed to be dreary, but it's like, I'm so happy that- I'm not look, even gonna use, I'm gonna use this umbrella This to is dance impossible. Prop, it's impossible for me to feel anything but oh. happiness right now. I'm singing in the rain. I'm happy again. You should say like, I, and he just communicated that emotion so well. And like, I- Man, every Bro, time I see th it. This, and again, I don't want to keep comparing, but this is what West Side Story didn't do as well. They made sure in Singing in the Rain that every single part of the performance, the singing, the dancing, everything moved the story oh. along. And okay? even he wasn't just dancing for the sake of having a moment of dance. The dancing moved the story along. And Take tonight, a note, I, West Side Story movie. And I think you 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 brought another just great point to how the story just moves. Because first of all, there and like and I don't mind this, uh, but we talked about this before. How in most musicals, like the musical number will happen, and then at the end, it'll be like. Duh, you know they'll fade off into the next scene, which is fine. And even they, they even did that we, a couple of we times. Love some of those, yeah, I love all of them, honestly. But e even in Singing in the Rain, they did that sometimes. But with the, also they did in Singing in the Rain is they will do a, a musical number just like Good Morning, Good Morning, and then they will continue talking right afterwards. Like they, they'll just continue the scene. And that's something that doesn't happen often. But just to your point of using the music to move the story along, yes, it was just perfect in that. And it doesn't. It, it just makes the the uh, whole feel of the movie flow. Yeah. So and much, bro, so you much you were talking about the. We've already been talking about the the singing, okay? Because we're talking about the songs. But let's go there. Let's, let's go, go there. there. Sis, let's, let's, sis, what did you think of just like, again, watching it? And, and sis, I think the movie was a fresher watch for you than it was for me and Aubrey, because we, me and Aubrey, because we, rem we remember it. Order, yeah. mm. But sis, watching it with those fresh eyes, please reflect on the singing <laughs> and the songs. I love my sister. <laughs> 
I just love y'all so much. And y'all for, the, are, you, for the sake of it being Janai, so you are so Janai, podcast. Brittany, you are so Brittany. <laughs> that Brittany I just, did a dramatic cross, look to the heavens for as she thought. Okay. <laughs> and now she has returned to us, ready to speak. So <laughs> <laughs> so unnecessarily dramatic and I love it, I love it. so as I have just taken that moment to reflect on the <laughs> how I enjoyed this, <laughs> uh, this musical right 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 yeah right 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 well that is the, so that's what's to my point earlier I was like I want to be mad that I'm not represented in this movie but I was like I cannot be upset right now I was like I want to be so mad like and I was like no because I'm singing in the rain too so I was like I'm about to go get an umbrella is it raining what's going on I want to I want to jump on the back of my couch and make it fall and keep dancing like that's not I want to do that too but the parts of it, the singing was so good. Mm. And so just, there's a difference between people who are just doing something for the sake of doing it. And then those who have become a student of that thing. Mm. Gene Kelly, Cosmo. Okay, you're doing the, the back and, and forth. Debbie. Yeah, so Gene Them. Kelly, Donald <laughs> O'Connor, <laughs> Debbie Reynolds. And Debbie. Okay. <laughs> Just to get the names of the actors. Okay. These three people. Talent. Man. That oh. is that is talent. That it, is it, I, your I, point, that refined is refined talent. Refined talent. I yes. have this natural ability to dance. I have this natural ability to sing. And I have this natural ability to, to entertain. But I also know that I need to make sure I am honing my craft. And yes. they did that in this movie and they just made you enjoy it. And so listening to each one of their voices oh. just be seamless, I just enjoy, it made you enjoy the songs even more. It just made you, you know, just enjoy every piece Man. of it. And even with them like <laughs> showing how Lena couldn't see. Now I would love to see that actress in a in a role where she's playing her normal yeah. voice. But whatever her playing that oh this voice right here <laughs> like her do, and and I doing this like her doing that the whole movie. I was yeah, you you know you know I what was I was like, thinking. She is you know worst. what I was thinking when they were trying to train her. I was like, oh, they need some Henry Higgins up in here. They need to just get Henry Higgins. Give her he Higgins give 30 her right. days. Then she will get, get her all get the way her right. right. <laughs> and that part of the movie where they were deciding to turn this into a talkie and they, the whole situation where they were trying to get her to talk into the mic. Oh my God. And she would not talk into the mic. I, that man was so, that I don't know who that actor was, but he was so good at being frustrated and trying so to make it work. He <laughs> was so frustrated. <laughs> That she was not talking to. It's in the flower. I was just, I felt so bad for him. I was like, why won't she talk in the flower? So just these, they're, they're, they're her being able to even, because I don't know if she can actually sing mm -hmm. in real life, but her being able to still have that. His silly name, voice. that actor's name was Douglas Fowley. He played Roscoe Dexter. He, he did played the so director. Well. I had to so say his funny. name because sis, he did. He, he did so well. Yeah. Um, but hers even being able to sing in that voice and keep it that way. I was like, that's also talent. Because so many times you hear people who are trying to do an accent and they're trying to do a voice and you can hear just a little bit how they break out of it. She didn't break out of that at all. She was in it completely. Mm -hmm. So we're the point you're like, she really talked like that? Yeah. You know, she's just, yeah. she did an amazing job. So to even have, and I, even when they were recording the voiceovers and you just heard her singing, you were just like, there are real people out here like this today. Yeah. That there, this is, this is still going on where people are not super talented. And there are people remastering their voices and doing all types of things in the studio. So when you hear them live, you're like, oh, 
Oh, oh, that's you. Oh, <laughs> I think yeah. I'll go listen to the CD. Like yeah. it's, it's like I don't hmm, Spotify. Like, I know, don't want to hear you live. And so right. just the pre. <laughs> I just thought I really thought they did a great job. And it's so crazy because if they were to do a musical now of any sort, the kind of singing that was excellent and wonderful in this movie would not fly today because they weren't doing any runs you know it wasn't you know we didn't have a I mean, bunch the, the, of riffs it was just like i'm singing the, 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 i'm which singing. is true talent because i've right. heard so yeah, many I, music I, teachers talk about how when you have to do that to your voice oh, sometimes mm-hmm. and you're not just able to keep that straight note that there is there's not a there's a a complexity and being able to keep the same note to keep the same key that's right and to not have to do so much what modulation and all these different all things that. yes well, to, well, so well, you know I, and of course that's to the beholder but you know i'm just saying <laughs> what y'all are talking about is like you had to be talented back then yes, like like it, like there, there was to. no you, there was no hiding like when i was i'm like I'm watching these sequences. I'm like, yo, this is one take. Like, like e- e- even if you did, had to be one take, had like, to be. E- but but what I'm saying is, is even if you did it over and over again, the final one was one take. Like like even if let's say you messed it up or whatever, and had to start over again, when you finally got it, it wasn't spliced together. It was one seamless take. You know what I mean? And like, crazy. And then just seeing how, even like, when, to go back to the, um, I mean, because I guess we could talk about the cinematography because the scene that where you were talking about with uh, her name escaped me that quick, but Sid, Sid, uh, Sid Charisse. But that <laughs> whole that whole dance Dang. sequence <laughs> when, um, which basically. It was him, it was a dream sequence of him explaining how this movie is going to open up. And so it was like showing in his imagination how this was going to play out, but it was actually playing out, which was a really cool thing to me. I like that convention, me. yeah. And um, that scene where they were dancing and she, he saw her across the room and then they made everybody disappear. And it was like a dream sequence within a dream sequence yes. of, of like, this is how they felt when they saw each other. And when she had that really long train, yes, it almost made me start looking stuff up because I want to know how did they do that? How did they get it? How it was just up in the air? Where they got it to blow <laughs> in the right direction. And even the how do you choreograph a skirt? like how do you and and <laughs> what what there was one point where she walked around Gene Kelly and had the train like go around him. It's like how do you get she, all of that? I think she to work. It was beautiful. With no camera tricks, but like they would. It seems like and I, I'm not taking it, but it felt like a CGI thing. It did because before it was so beautiful CGI, well, no CGI, not a C a G or nor an I. Oh, Listen, I was so like, good. so maybe there's a string in the ceiling and we can't see. Like I was, I was like, how are they doing this? Oh. And fans, strings and fans, y'all. That's all they strings had. and fans. And, and you I, know what? Something, but I appreciate like even before it's showing you how the even without social media that we have right now and the internet that we have right now, the people word of mouth will always and forever be the strongest a form of publicity, the strongest form of community, you know, just uh getting something out there. And, and people's opinions are always important in these circumstances. And so I just remember them kind of hiding in the corner to watch people coming out of the first ca- Cavalier. They were like, this is terrible. What? You know, just, just <laughs> there is everybody because it was terrible. It and was. so it was, it, it was, was absorbed. Um, it was awful. And so, 
it was awful. But to think that they would have the opportunity now, they had to change it and be able to do those different things. Like I just loved just that. It was it was almost like having watching social media before social media was a thing. Yeah. Like being able to see that. So yeah. The real social media. Right. It was actual social. Is it right? right. <laughs> and I, and- and y'all, and again, I, I feel like we, we 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 talked about the we did the dancing, we did the singing, we've started to talk about the cinematography. But y'all, back to the acting, just real quickly, y'all. There was a a, a character, an actor on there that I I want to just do a, a pop quiz right now to see if either of you, with a little couple seconds to think, will remember who this actress was. So Zelda, who played um, the best friend of. Uh, Lena Lockwood, the Lena's best friend. Yeah, Zelda. Do you remember they kept referencing Zelda? Zelda was another actress at the time that had her own films happening. Okay, because they were just naming. Um, because in fact, uh, Kathy Selden, who was Jean's. Uh, <laughs> look, I'm going back and forth. For, I'm going yeah, to Britney, yeah, like Britney. Going back and forth between the. So Don Lockwood's girlfriend, <laughs> Kathy Selden, her big break was about to be being cast as a, a little sister on one of Zelda's films, right? So that lets you know that Zelda was a big name at the time. Did y'all recognize the actress that was Zelda? I can already tell you, I did not. If you think about it for a second. No, I, I would have had- It's gonna I shock your mind at Channel 9. I'm ready, I'm on Channel 8, let's go. Let, I just noticed she was a hater. That's all I know. Y'all, that was Rita Moreno. <laughs> really? And I just want to say, like, they didn't, they never, nine. they didn't make any reference to her being Latinx. Y'all know she's a uh, Puerto Rican. Mm. I hope I'm not mistaken on that. Um, and she was playing Zelda. She didn't have many lines, but she was present enough to move the story along. Wow. And so this is the- this Yeah, I'm is on the- channel nine, sis. I didn't realize. Wow. So was 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 Rita Moreno playing white in the movie? Maybe. Or were they creating a movie lot where a Latinx, Latinx actress had a starring uh, role? I'm going to go with that. In movies. I'm just going to go with that. I like that part. I'm going to just go with that. Because if we go with that, then it really does bring that racist movie scene that we saw for a minute or two it brings it into context that they were really trying in this movie to show the times they were trying to show like there was this this really racist and unfortunate thing happening at the exact same time where there was perhaps a latin x mm-hmm. um star rising to fame or had was already there actually yeah. enough that kathy being second on the movie was going to be a big break right Mm. Yeah, I, you know, that's great. That's deep. It, it, yeah, let's go it, with it's, that. It, it, it's funny because, <laughs> like, I in in other circumstances, I just want to go. Like in my mind, I'm just going there because, because, like, like I, I just like, and I'm intentionally doing that because I, I I just feel like, first of all, this movie was made in 1952. That's so, right. I mean, that's right. I mean, so. Like you have to understand that, but it's just the way Gene Kelly comes across to me. Yeah, I would just be so disappointed. I want him to be my friend. Yeah, I do. I want him to be. I, my just, friend. I, I just. I just. And, and look. Same thing. I'm with just Debbie saying. Reynolds. Some people. I want some him to people, be my friend. But some people you know are, what, are in denial. I, I, I'm not in denial by not wanting to know. I, I just. I. I. It's. I, but I will say this. I think that sometimes because we're in an age of everyone wanting everything to be inclusive um, and there to be representation, Mm -hmm. right? I also believe that that's not real life. So if I drive out to Cranberry, Pennsylvania, you're gonna be hard pressed to see anybody that looks like me, except for me. That's from the cashier, to the mm-hmm. mayor, to the yeah, yeah, police, I get what you're to yeah. all residents. I think about 
this being the case for this movie, if we're picking up and just taking a group of people who are in this situation, then it's like, okay. They were depicting the movie industry in the late 20s. At that time. And it was like, and then the other part of it, how would I feel then if I did see me in this movie and I was a maid, I was the backdoor person. You know, I was something else. Like, how would I then feel in that moment? You know, just thinking of that as well. So, but I, I, so that, like I was saying, like I said in the beginning, I had to take all of that away just so I could be in the moment of the movie. But I also, one thing I told Janaya was, I was like, I think about it as the opposite of Boomerang. We're like, Boomerang, everybody was black at Boomerang. Like, it was, it was just like, well, did, well, oh they, they not here either so okay then like you know so I was like I feel like this was like a situation where it was like just look at it like that they're like I mean they're around I'm pretty sure but they're not in this neighborhood so it's kind of like I wasn't like Zelda I, I really no wanted one. to be a hundred percent just talking about feel good with this with this movie but I'll give you my one ain't no my, way my, my, See, now I don't even want to give you my one. You're I don't even want to give you my one. Already I'm already there. I'm already right. there. But since both of you gave your little, I'll, my twins came in the uh, the um, make them dance. Make no, them laugh. No, no, not to make them laugh. The, the, I forget what the- Gotta um, dance. Gotta dance. Gotta dance. Got it. How is it Britney is the one reminding me? This is crazy, but oh, I'm not, I'm not, but, I'm not surprised. Well, you about were combining that. too but, when you said "gotta dance." That was, I'm not combining. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Yeah, you. Were well, I thought, I thought this was what got it. You said make them dance. You were combining yeah. the make them laugh and the what, gotta that, dance. That, I know that's what I was trying to. Yeah. Don't, and Britney don't brought be me there. Which, that I don't put you back on track. Y'all but, trying but, to um, on me. But there was definitely some. Meanwhile, we're very surprised. <laughs> very, very, I mean, very yeah. but uh, but there was a little bit of the Lindy Hop feel of you know in that. Yep. And that, 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 huh? What's Lindy Hop? Okay. Well, what we're going to do is <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is uh, all right. Well, have you ever seen Have you ever seen Malcolm X? Yeah. No, bro. I thought you were about to give Britney some homework. The way y'all always give me homework. Homework time. Yes! <laughs> Finally, <laughs> someone else has a homework assignment. Britney, you got to go do your homework. Sorry, and at the beginning of the next podcast, you're going to have to explain it to us. You're going to have to explain it. You're going to have to explain it to and us. And you're going to have to reflect on why, what made Aubrey twins just the skosh. Yes. You're yeah. going to have to reflect on yeah. that just a little bit. Yeah. You're going to have to reflect. And, so but, your, your, your full thought is that there was some Lindy hop in that got a dance scene and it made you twin because you thought that they were stealing from the black man. It, I'm not, what I'm just saying is, <laughs> is that that was definitely like some. There was like some appropriation going on there, you know. Like, and, yeah. like I'm, and, and I, and like I said, I, I don't want to. I'm bringing my my one thing up because y'all y'all brought you know your your things up. I'm just saying that that was the thing that made me twitch a little bit, just because. Yeah. I did and, feel like and, yeah, and, and I felt into like that story in that one part. <laughs> and, and I'm just saying, I felt like if they were going to slip in a few random people of color, that's when they could have done it if if they wanted to but like i said I, that was that was my one that was my one mm -hmm. just because that that was everybody it'll make as soon as you start doing your homework assignment it, it's all a snap in place but like that that, that was okay. my one but but yeah so um but yeah so i, I I mean, I think, I, think, I think we covered it all. I think, I we think can, so. And I think we, we can we vote. Talked, I think we, we can were vote. talking about the visuals of it. Yes. The colors, y'all. I mean, okay, that I, was the one I, point. Yeah. That, brought me, that brought me back to one more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even in me, 
not, uh, you know, admittedly, the romantic parts of movies normally make me twinge, okay, a little bit. I, you know, I don't fast forward through them or anything like that, but they make me, you, you know, like, uh, while they're happening. Yeah. But that whole scene where he was setting up, uh, the per where he was about to talk to her. And, and, and when he was he, like, I need the right setting. To he was like, I need the out. right setup. And then he was like, bringing it in and turning on the lights and turning on the mist. And like, I was like, that's dope. That, that was it dope. Was and awesome. then when he it was like, let me turn on this fan. So, was, you know, her clothes were slightly blowing into it. I was like, no, that was, that, that was yeah. dope. Yeah. Yo, I dope. think one of the things this movie did a wonderful job of was celebrating the aesthetic of the time, not just showing it but celebrating it. Yeah. I mean, the costumes, yeah. the way that they use color to show the mood of a scene. Um, yeah. And the way that even though the films were ultimately going to be shown in black and white, they showed how there was just a robustness of color on set. On oh, set, um, yes. yes. And y'all, it was just, and I think that when a movie is going to be shown in black and white, there's probably a burden to be more complicated in terms of the color palette um, and to have more texture uh, because it's going to be shown in black and white. And they showed that because the sets were just in the costumes. Very just, vibrant. Oh, thank you, bro. That's the word, vibrant, vibrant. Oh, and, and Brittany, just, just to go back, um, what, I, what I'm gonna need, as part of your homework, uh, you have to look up Hell's a Poppin' Dance Scene. Hell's a poppin' dance scene. All right. This is That's fun. part of your homework. This is so good. Okay. Lindy right. okay. Hop that and Hell's a poppin'. Hell's a poppin'. All one word. Hell's a poppin' dance scene. So. This I got is it. so great. This is All so right. great. So, I think we so covered then, everything now, y'all. Yeah, so let's vote. Let's vote as we need to vote, as if we need to vote. But let, let's. Right. Don't vote well, the vote. Can we quotes. say the, the, the person that. Okay. The person. And shout out to also the actor that played the person that owned the lot. He did a great he was job funny. too. Oh, yeah, he was, he funny. was funny. He, was he funny. did a he great funny. job too. He, yeah, he, he was, he was yeah. so stressed out. The he was these, stressed out the whole movie. <laughs> the with these crazy actors. So he was like, is this oh, so nut good. nut Lena really about to sue me? Okay. Like, are you Millard Millard Mitchell <laughs> played yes. RF Simpson? Good. He, he, he did good. such a great job. He was good. Yeah, he was good. He, he did was a good. really good job. All right. So obviously, I mean, I already knew it was big, going to be a classic from my perspective. So it definitely gets my full open umbrella uh, uh, in the rain or whatever you want to call it. It gets my full umbrella. Yes, it is a classic. And a full footnote, it has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, wow. now that does nope. not happen often. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Singing in the Rain definitely gets my umbrella. And it is because it managed to do an amazing job in terms of not just the music, it was the music, it was the dancing, it was the acting, it was the, the, the actual story arc, the story as it was written and as it was told. And um, and then on top of all of that, it it had an ability to kind of like um, create a timeless emotional experience. I think that's what about it. Like, so that was the thing. It was like, and again, I don't want to keep comparing, but when we watched West Side Story, I didn't, I couldn't get into it now the way that I wanted to. The nostalgia couldn't even get me there. But the emotional experience of singing in the rain, it truly is timeless to me. I think in 50 years, it's going to feel the exact same way that it feels right now. So that is why uh, for me, it, it definitely gets gets my umbrella. Wow. Yeah, it, it also absolutely gets my umbrella because you all already know if you have listened to the podcast, my mindset is always, can I watch this again? Can I, is this something that will still rile the same emotion, the same reaction time and time again? Um, and will it influence like when my kids, when they watch it, will they be excited? And my answer to that is yes. Mm -hmm. So it absolutely gets my umbrella, my raincoat that 
is hanging on the side of a light pole. Oh. That, y'all, well, that's it. The that's it. And, and can the I just say that, red. look? Can I just say, Bro. If, you're, if you're watching this and, like, I know that musicals might not be your thing. Maybe, but I'm just saying, if you could just watch something and just strip away whatever preconceived notions you may have, or just just enjoy good singing and good, amazing dancing and color, I would definitely recommend you to take some time and, and, and watch this one. It will be a very good introduction into the genre. I co signed so, oh, that. Yeah, and good. that, and that is good. why Singing in the Rain is a classic from the right perspective. <laughs> so good. Thank you, bro and sis. Y'all tune in next time because the next episode of The Right Perspective, episode 26, will be a recap and discussion of Menace to Society. This is who the right, parallel. We're and going the from one side of the pen, pendulum and, to the other. And, and, and the parallels of it next. to singing in the rain. <laughs> 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 yeah, the reins of systemic oppression. Yeah. Anyway, we'll and talk about that Lena, next time. Lena, Lena was a minister to society. And let me, just say, <laughs> let me just say, Brittany and I are doing our best to bring Jana along. This as this will be our first time. I haven't seen any society. of that movie. I have at least seen like a scene or two of Boys in the Hood or something. I I, I don't think I've even seen a bit of it. So Listen, let me just let you know. You're going the to... next podcast is going to start off and that's going to be like this. So it needs some tea <laughs> or something for the next podcast. I'm... So, all right. So I'm very excited. Uh, I'm very excited. Oh, Let's get it. Yeah. Right. Thank Prepare you all yourself. for joining us. This has been The Right Perspective. We'll see you next time. Bye, bro. Bye, Bye guys. Love, love y'all. Love